Hey coders and welcome to episode 5 of our Dart season on the Flutter course. In the last episode we talked about functions in general, but now in this episode we're going to be moving on and trying to simplify the topic of asynchronous functions. Now the Dart programming language by nature runs and executes the code synchronously. That means it'll go line by line and wait until a previous line of code has completed running and executing before moving on to the next line of code. And that is known as synchronous, right? But we can actually run code asynchronously. That means before the previous line of code has actually even completed running, we will start the next line of code, right? So if you take a look at this example, I've written out a very simple main method and asynchronous normal behavior would run like this. It would start executing my function one and then wait until my function one has completed or returned something until or before it starts executing my function two. And then that will wait until my function two has completed or returned something and then start executing my function three. So basically my function two is prevented from running until my function one has completed. Now asynchronous behavior, uh, if you wanted to code this up asynchronously, then basically how it would run then is you would start my function number one and then immediately after that start my function two before my function one has ever completed running. And this can be really helpful, say if my function one takes a very, very long time to complete, then you can start doing things in tandem and start multitasking. You can just make your program a lot faster. So we're gonna see examples of that in the code coming up, but let's move on to the next slide for now. So all of this asynchronous code can work because of the future object. So the future object is basically a placeholder that a, say, a function will return, and it's basically saying, hey, this is just a placeholder for now, and I'm gonna go work on that function. I'm gonna go continue executing this function. And then when I have some return value or have some data that I want to return back to you, then I'm going to replace that future object with the actual data that you requested. So again, I think that'll make more sense when we see it in the code, but just remember that that is a very special thing, the future object, and that's what makes asynchronous code possible. Now there are two additional keywords that are important to know and that is async and await. So we're gonna see again examples of both of these keywords in the code coming up really shortly. But async and await are keywords that help control the flow of asynchronous functions. So let's hop on into, over to the code and learn about all of these things. Now I'll admit asynchronous functions are more of a complicated topic within the Dart programming language. So as we go through this code demonstration, if you feel confused at times, or you don't understand certain parts of the demonstration, don't worry about that. The only reason why I am putting this lesson so early on within the playlist is just to gain you more exposure to async functions and the future object. Because when we start developing real mobile applications, we're gonna be using async functions a lot, especially for when we need to say, make an HTTP request to get data over the internet, right? And, and, and things such in that nature. So I have coded two different examples. So let's go over the first example right now. So it looks like I have defined a function and named it delayed high. It's going to be returning a future. And it looks like that future is going to be a greeting after one second it's going to turn into the string high, and then we're going to return that instance of that future. So we're going to call this function. So right now this function is synchronous, right? So how can we turn this into an asynchronous function? Well, to turn any function into an async function, all we need to do is right before these curly brackets, right, right before this code block, type the word, the keyword async. And just like that, now this function is an asynchronous function. So every asynchronous function returns a future. So we have that right there in our return type. This is a future, right? This is a future object. And it's customary and good practice to put within that future 
what is the expected data type that that future will be converted into, all right? So if we look at our greeting, which we also have defined as a future, all right? This greeting right here is a future object, but after one second, then we are going to return this string right here, hi. So this future, so first we're going to return this future, right? But we can expect that future to turn into a string, right? Eventually we will be returned a string and that future will be re will turn into a string. Okay, so if we run this right now and look at our console, then we can see that we called the function delayed high this ran this right so our our the instance of a future object was created right here we stored that instance in this variable greeting we printed out line eight we returned the instance of that future object so that printed out right in line 12 right here and then we printed out line 13. so that is the course of of this this program so far but let's say that we actually wanted to wait until this future had completed before moving on to the next line, right? Before moving on to line eight, how would we do that? Because right now it's just returning an, a, a future, an instance of future. But let's say that we want to wait until the data that we were, that we were expecting had actually returned, then we would have to use the keyword await. So this is a really important keyword to know. This, what this means is that we're going to wait until this operation is done, right? Until this future has been converted into uh, the data type that we're waiting for. And then after that, after that, then we can move on to the next line. So as you can see, we're getting an error right now. So why are we getting an error? Well, since we, since we used this keyword await, that basically means that we're no longer returning a future we are just returning a string, right? We're gonna wait until this future has been completed and has data and returned data. And then once after we wait, then that data is going to be a string. So this is no longer a future. This is now instead a string. And it, the string that's going to be uh, stored in this variable is going to be high right there. So now let me run this and watch this watch the console down here. So if we're gonna run it, we're first going to get these two lines, and then if you saw that right, then after one second, then it printed out line eight. So let me do that one more time, watch closely on this console. So we print out these two lines, and then one second later, we print out line eight. So why does that happen? Well, we are calling the function delayed high, and it's an async function, right? So that means after we call it, Basically, we're going to return the the future, right? So it's going to instantly print out that this that we are returning a future instance, right? And then since it's async, we're going to be moving on to the very next line before this function has even completed, right? So again, we're, we're just going to return an, an instance of future, then move on to the next line, line 13, while this right here is running while this one second is completing. And then after that one second has completed, right, we're waiting until that one second has completed, then it's gonna return this in a callback function. It's gonna return this string high, store that in a variable called greeting, and then print out that in line eight, right there, print out line eight after this has been completed, after one second has been completed. All right, so let's say that though we, we didn't want to print out like the instance of future, right? We just wanted to print out the greeting itself, right, right in here. So how could we wait until this function was done to print out our greeting? Well, uh, we did it once before with this await, so let's try again. We're gonna await until this future has actually printed out the string. And to do that, we type in await, just like we did before. But the only time we can use this keyword await is when we are operating within an async function. So the function that we're operating within here 
is this main method. So we're gonna have to convert our main method now into an async function, and that will take the error away. So if we run this now, we should expect this to wait, right? So we're gonna say await. So we're gonna now await this one second to be completed. It's gonna print out line eight, and then finally, once we return an actual value that's not a future, oops, then we will print out that return value, which happens to be high, and then we'll move on to the very next line, which is line 13. Again, I hope that wasn't too confusing. Uh, just practice it a lot yourselves, but again, if, if all you're gaining right now is exposure, then that is okay with me. All right, let's move on to the very next example, which is more of a practical example. So again, sometimes we can uh, basically make our own futures, our own instances of a future object from scratch by doing something like this, future.delayed. But most often we won't actually be making our own future instances. They will just be returned to us from packages that we use. So again, a very, a very um, popular way of handling async functions and, and futures is through requesting data off of the internet using HTTP. So this right here is going to return for us a future, right? So this API right here, all it is doing is we are basically, we're going to be getting a location from a zip code. So we're gonna be supplying a zip code down here in this function right there. And then we're going to be getting, we're gonna be accessing this API, which again is this API is hosted on servers that are miles away from my laptop. So that's going to take some time to request that data and then have that data returned back to my laptop. So we're gonna await that. And then once we have that data, that response, then we can actually start doing things with it. So watch this first, if I get rid of this await keyword and just run this function, watch what happens. It's actually going to uh, it's going to error out on us, right? Because this is all this is doing is returning a future. And now we're gonna try to decode a future object, right? That doesn't make any sense. Um, we, we would actually expect a JSON string, right? So we're gonna have to await this future right here until it turns, until it actually returns us some data, which will be a JSON string and then we can decode that JSON string. So if I run this now, then we should see in the console, we're gonna await until we get that location. So first it's going to print out the location, right? And then once, right, it's gonna, it's gonna get that location from our response, and then we're going to return the response itself. So again, the Lansing was printed out first, and then we returned the value, which we were awaiting. So then that caused us to print out finally this response, which is a JSON string again, and then we printed out done. So again, I really suggest that you take some time to uh, understand what's going on, how the control flow is operating. But again, if, if all you gained was just exposure from async functions, then that is okay with me. We're gonna deal a lot with async functions in the future and you'll get a lot more practice that way, especially when we do HTTP requests. All right guys, if you have any questions, please, po uh, please post them in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this one and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the very next episode.